Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you for being with me again today. Today's article has to do with something that I've been expecting and waiting for some time. And that is uh, something that has to do with Russia and maybe deploying some uh, missiles on the Western Hemisphere, that is, on the uh, United States' backyard. Uh, if you remember, Russia promised that when uh, the Americans said that they will expand, extend NATO, it will uh, enlarge NATO, admitting uh, Ukraine in it. That was before uh, February 24th. And the Russians said, okay, if you're going to do that, then we will reserve our right to negotiate and maybe bring the same kind of uh, uh, military uh, infrastructure in countries close to you, which is Latin America. The Americans dismiss this like, like they always do because they seem to live in a, I'm talking about uh, the guys in charge, like they live in a cuckoo land in a different uh, uh, dimension, which is, seem to be uh, overwhelmingly immersed into ideology and uh, just uh, outside of reality. That's how I see it. It's a delusional way of seeing reality. It's kind of like the way uh, some, um, how should I put it, uh, the monarchies see the life. They see it differently than the regular people, let's put it this way. Uh, so, or a billionaire or someone born in a wealthy family and never had to go and buy groceries. Uh, this is kind of how I see sometimes the leadership in the United States viewing things that are clearly not the way they look at them. And it's not that we are right and they are wrong because we are smarter, but it's like it's obvious just looking around us and they can't see that. It's just something that just passes by them. So in this case, if you remember, um, Russians said they will do what they will do, and this is probably the timing. If you remember, or if you know, the Summit of America takes place in Los Angeles, California, and um, Nicaragua was not invited, together with uh, Venezuela and with Cuba. So this article is from Associated Press from June 9, 2022, and this is the title. Nicaragua authorizes entry of Russian troops, planes, ships. So, the government of Nicaragua, President Daniel Ortega, has authorized Russian troops, planes, and ships to deploy to Nicaragua for purposes of training, law enforcement, and emergency response. You know what that is? Great. In a decree published this week and confirmed by Russia on Thursday, Ortega will allow Russian troops to carry out law enforcement duties, humanitarian aid, rescue, and search mission in emergencies or natural disasters. The Nicaraguan government also authorized the presence of small contingents of Russian troops for exchange of experience and training. Russian Foreign Ministry spokesman, sp spokeswoman Maria Zakharova told the Russian news outlet Sputnik that the measure was routine. <laughs> and uh, let me translate that for you. Authorize the presence of small contingents, just enough to be able to um, work some um, missile launching systems, <laughs> some rockets. All right, we are talking about a routine, twice a year, procedure for the adoption of any Nicaraguan law on the temporary admission of foreign military personnel to its territory in order to develop cooperation in various areas, including humanitarian and emergency responses, combating organized crimes and drug trafficking, Zakharova said. Do you believe that? Yes, I believe that because it's just euphemisms. Nothing from what's over there, probably just a facade. I guarantee you that. And you know why? Because we're going to hear a very, very violent verbal at this time response from the United States, because they're not going to buy this. They know exactly what's going on over there. Oh, okay, guys, you can go over there and take care of the law enforcement and drug dealings, you know, catch the bad dudes and yeah, help people over there if it rains too much and, you know, that's uh, mudslides and so on. You help them. Yeah, okay, thank you very much, Russia and Russian military. <laughs> okay, all right, you buy that? 
Me neither. She noted the law also authorized troops from the United States, Mexico, and other Central American countries for such purposes. So, so it's going to be a common uh, denominator. They will all be involved over there, including the United States. See? Ortega has been a staunch ally of Russia since his, his days in the leadership of the 1979 revolution that ousted dictator Anastasio Somoza. Hmm. So Ortega served as president from 1985 to 1990 before being re-elected to power in 2007. So he was re-elected democratically great. So why wasn't Nicaragua then invited to the summit of Americas? What's the problem there? Ortega's government arrested dozens of politician opposition leaders, including most of the potential presidential candidates in the months before his re-election to afford consecutive terms last year. Oh, that's why. <laughs> his government has shut down dozens of non-governmental groups that have accuses of working, he accuses of working on behalf of foreign interests, possible, to destabilize his government. Oh, that's a regime change, an orange revolution. All right, so um, then it's interesting. Nicaragua was not invited uh, to the uh, Summit of Americas because of this, but you have uh, Saudi Arabia, who's uh, one of our allies. All right, so that's why this is hypocrisy. It's not only that. So they authorized the presence of uh, Russian ships, right? Military. Well, that's not good. Uh, that's going to be a probably, or certainly, a second uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, but this time this is going to be a little bit more, um, how should I put it, real. Not, I'm going to say real, like the other one was not real, but the other one was uh, Khrushchev's uh, attempt to get the American real nuclear weapons from Turkey out. And Kennedy said, like they do right now, get out of here, Khrushchev, go and sing at a different table. So that's what they did. And Khrushchev said, yeah, okay, we're going to do the same thing to you. How do you think those guys photographed those tubes from the, on the planes are on top of the, of the ship, not in the hull, on top? Because they wanted these guys to see. They, they, were, they didn't transport just so you know. There was no uh, atomic bomb or nuclear warhead in Cuba. All right, just so you know that. If you knew otherwise, now you know. If you don't know, now you know. Nevertheless, um, and then what happened? Khrushchev said, okay, we'll seize our Cuban uh, transfer, but you take, in six months, you take your shit out of uh, your nuclear weapons from Turkey. And the state said, yes, we will do. And that's how Khrushchev supposedly blinked. <laughs> well, if you know the whole story, it's not that, uh, yeah, man, we did it, yeah, we won. All right, so there you have it. Uh, and this is just the first one. This is Nicaragua. I expect other countries to do the same thing, at least two more. And this is why the new uh, club is forming. This is another proof the new club is expanding because they're sick with the big club that right now rules the world. Or he's there and tells everybody how immoral they are and how they should run their countries and what they should do. Otherwise, you place sanctions, embargoes, regime change and orange revolutions. Well, that's, uh, how do you call it? Uh, United States did, it, did this on its own. You want Ukraine? Now you have Nicaragua. And not only that, we'll find out what's next. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.